The golfer profile tool is uh, probably my favorite tool on the website at the moment. It's just so much information to allow you to deep dive any specific golfer, find out every little detail about them. It's it's just absolutely my favorite. Um, so very, very simple stuff at the top here. You know, you can choose uh, what golfer you want. You can search through and, and, and find them. You can sort by whatever field they're in. You can see their uh, four main strokes gain stats broken down over the last 100 rounds and then just a little bit of information and a nice and a nice headshot but um below that it's going to default you to the results tab and the results are exactly what it sounds like it's every event that they play basically anywhere in the world supporting PGA tour European tour champions tour corn fairy tour live golf asian tour if they played an event on one of those tours uh it's going to show up here and it's going to have what tour they played on, the name of the event, their finishing position, their salary on DraftKings, if it was available. Obviously, not all of those events are available in terms of salaries. And then what their strokes gain breakdown was. So right off the bat, we are learning so much about uh, trends, strengths and weaknesses, whether they're playing well, whether they're not playing well, where in the world they played, all of this information immediately. What you'll also note... Um, so here I, I picked Victor because I knew he had a couple of European tour events that we could look through as well. Um, you'll also notice that the strokes gained breakdown off the tee approach around the green putting that is also coming through from the European tour. That That's new. That's not something that had been available in the past. It is available now. I've got at least three years of that data loaded into the database. So that's also a phenomenal way to get a better understanding of players who might reside primarily on a different tour on the European tour to be able to see. Um, you know, there are times where I, I, I mean, I do a lot of stuff here. I want to say, uh, you know, what was Victor's best putting uh, tournament of his career? It was the BMW International Open the twenty in 2021. He gained nearly nine strokes with the putter. Uh, Omega Dubai Desert Classic, eight and a half, right? So sometimes when I see a golfer maybe really struggle or have a really good week, I'm trying to look for context into how often something like that happens and being able to come into the golfer profile and, and quickly be able to identify that is really, really important. If I only wanted to look at a specific year, you know, if I only wanted to look at 2020, I could uncheck these little uh, toggles here and, and get a more a more focused view of a, of a particular season. Or if I wanted to, you know, only look at uh, specific tournaments, I could type in, you know, Mayakoba. Let's get this in here. Or I guess technically I have it listed in here as um, Worldwide Technology Championship. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So there it is. So there, this is the four years that he played at the event in Mayakoba, right? So you can kind of filter on years, or if I wanted to just do, um, you know, maybe I just want to do major championships. I could do the Masters. I could also add in uh, the U.S. Open, and maybe Victor's not a great because he doesn't he hasn't played a ton of a ton of these. But I could say, you know, I could add a couple of these in here: uh, PGA Championship, Open Championship, and this is his major championship history, which is nice to see all in one spot. So you can get creative with um, the events that you want to list. The other tabs, let's start with the splits here. These are some of the, just the more regional split, splits that I could think of. I like looking at it by season so that you could see kind of trends. Um, Matt Fitzpatrick or Max Homa might be a better, a better view of this because what you'll find from Homa is that um, just constant improvement, right? I mean, just every year literally getting better and better. That's really good to see. We have the breakdown of... Uh, how they putt on each one of, of different putting surfaces, how they play round by round. And then this is new as well. The percentage of rounds that they gain X number of strokes. So Max Homa gains strokes to the field, zero or more, uh, 54% of the time. He gains one stroke or more, 38%, two or more, 25%, and three or more, 15%. Those are really good, solid numbers, but he only gains five or more strokes to the field in 4% of his rounds. I bet you if we find somebody like Rory, I bet you that's a lot more than 4%. Yeah, it's 12%. Um, the way that I like to look at this uh, is basically saying, what's a golfer's floor and what's their ceiling? And... Rory's ceiling is about as good as it gets. In 12% of his rounds, he gains five or more strokes to the field. That is a ton. And Max Homa won twice 
uh, you know, in the season that we're recording this. So it's not like I was comparing him against some scrub. So I, I like this to be able to say, and this is almost a perfect, like there's like just the same amount of drop off every single stat. Like uh, this is an incredible uh, pyramid or whatever you want to call this cone, tra- upside down traffic cone, uh, incredible funnel um, that Rory is is putting up. And then if you go to stats, so this is by season, and this is uh, straight from the PGA Tour. Their ranks across off the tee and scoring and approach and short game. It's very very straightforward. Uh, it's just it's directly from the PGA Tour. No manipulation there. Uh, what I also do is I load in all of the courses on the schedule for the year to show you, hey, where these golfers have had the most success. So, um, you know, let's let's look at TPC San Antonio for Rory. He's played six rounds there. He's gaining 2.21 strokes to the field per round. There's only two courses on the schedule in which Rory actually lost strokes to the field. Innisbrook, only two rounds. And Albany, four rounds. Everywhere else, he was phenomenal. And then the fantasy and betting tab... Um, this is all different types of fantasy formats. So it's chalk market, it's it's props, it's uh, how how frequently they're finishing inside the top 5, 10, or 20. It has their salaries and their ownership and where they're finishing and how many fantasy points they scored. So really just a way to deep dive all of this uh, in one spot. And you can go back and say, okay, when was the last time Rory McIlroy was you know, below $10,000? It was the 2022 Genesis Invitational. He was 9,700. He finished 10th. He was 19.5% owned. This is a very, very useful way to kind of look through, look through everything. And it's, uh, you know, quickly just become one of my absolute favorite tools.